As you say in your piece, Anastasia, for many people today, the prevailing viewpoint in the practice world is that calling clients out on this kind of thing or any kind of insensitive remark um, in the middle of session would really disrupt the real work, right, of doing therapy. It goes against some foundational idea that the job is to be neutral and to allow clients to bring their sort of whole selves to the work. But you suggest that that idea might be shifting. So, so the, the shift, shift I believe has really been, been the growing um, body of um, literature and understanding that the work, the real work is not a one-way unidirectional process, but rather a two-way reciprocal exchange um, in which the identities, the experiences, thoughts, and feelings of the client and the therapist matter. So bringing all that into the therapy room is what is um, really important. And it's really the emphasis that I give to students that I train and, um, something that I really try to punctuate in my own work with clients. Great. So let's um, let's take our viewers into session with you. Um, you. You write about a client who commits a microaggression in therapy in the article. It's about a teen complaining about a very good friend of hers, an African-American friend who has a better chance of getting into a good college, she says, because of the color of her skin. Um, instead of confronting her harshly about this, straight away you take us through your process of really considering a step-by-step -step approach to your response, and you acknowledge that it's a big deal what you're about to do to talk to her um, in this way. Can you take us through, through this process? Yeah, I think the, the process um, is based on the eight-step co constructive conversation model that I developed actually many years ago um, as a means to anchor myself um, in this work with clients and with students and having difficult dialogue. But the steps are as follows. It is setting a really clear and deliberate goal. You know, what am I really trying to achieve here? Um, step two is about being able to identify barriers. And in the case of psychotherapy, it is um, the possibility that there might be a rupture, which is a serious thing and something that when we have to really consider um consider seriously before taking on. The third, really the most important, I believe, is um, anchoring in some values. Um, this is the kind of work that really can yield our emotions to be untethered very easily given the nature and the sensitive topics that we're about to broach. And so I think being anchored in values becomes really important and allows us to um, respond um, mindfully versus reacting emotionally. Um, the next stage is to be able to set the stage. The next step, I'm sorry, is to be able to set the stage, a really nice and slow entree into a converse, into broaching difficult conversations. Um, step, the next step is actually taking action, which is the, the talking part. Um, but that is also layered in complexity. And um, the thing that we really emphasize here is how we stay in relationship connection as we are about to de deliver a really sensitive cargo, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, comes listening, um, something that we know how to do. But it's also listening, not just for the impact, but listening for intention and really listening to understand a position from your client that may be different um, and even unfamiliar to you. Mm -hmm. um, that follows responding. How do you respond um, in in reaction to what the what your client has said? And that also um, is really layered um, in that. It, it's, I think it's really important to appreciate um, your client's ability and willingness to engage in a difficult dialogue, to be able to check for accuracy of what you heard, because remember, you're listening with the intention um, to understand, and then also sharing the impact of what your client has um, offered to you, and then instilling some sense of hope that you can um, work it out, as well as to be able to continue um, this conversation at a later time. And so the model really concludes with a step eight, which is doing it again. How do we not just allow this to be a singular um, event, but because this conversation really is sensitive and um, really warrants the time and space for additional revisiting in the future. Um, so, so finally, and, and, and building on that, let's talk about how these kinds of conversations, rather than 
I mean, they may cause rupture, um, but, but you may be able to heal that rupture. Ultimately, how they might strengthen the therapeutic relationship for, for both of you. Yeah. You know, I think that the, um, the phenomenon of psychotherapy is really ultimately an act of courage. So having conversations such as this is, in my opinion, an experience an act of courage and therapists are we are trying to do our part um, to be able to take risks to create that brave space between myself and my client which is really central um, to the work um, we have to dare and take risks together um, to talk about the difficult things that often others outside of the therapy room will not or cannot do. You know, to me, that's the definition of safe and brave spaces. Mm -hmm. And um, it means to, I think, you know, of course, then um, taking those risks can inevitably risk in ruptures that could happen. But I think that the burden of taking the risks also have to be have to lie with with psychotherapists as we actually hold a little bit more privilege and power in that room and in that relationship. Mm -hmm. So should a rupture happen, right? then I think that we have to create lots of space um, in the room for our clients to be able to react and respond in all the ways that they feel like they need to and they should. You know, um, so then we go back to what we know how to do, which is to give space, to be able to listen, to be able to affirm and validate, to bear witness, to stay when things get really bumpy, and then ultimately to be able to weather the storm together. And I think the word together is um, really critical, and it aligns with the first question that you asked, Lauren, which is what is really important to the success of psychotherapy is the strength of our therapeutic alliance. Mm -hmm.